So, what mama don't like is, today's Sunday, and I've got mama out of bed at six o'clock this morning to go with me to go to the woods to be my film crew. It may not be four hours, mama. It might just be two. Just depends on how good I get out there and get the feeling. But um, mama's gonna go out there and do some uh, film crew filming for me this morning. We're gonna see if I can uh, make some stumps with this 592 and give you all a positive or negative feedback on my I don't want to say professional because I'm not a professional. I don't want to give myself a big hit, but I want to give you all my opinion on the 592. Here we are. It's only about a 13 acre job, and that's including the guy's yard. That's including all property. Some of these great big wolf trees such as that big black oak back there. I'm not going to fool with them. They wasn't subject to be cut. Whenever I did a walk through with the landowner, so I ain't going to fool with them. Thought I'd give you guys an update on these real quick. I got these from a place on the internet called Madsen's. It's a saw shop out west. Anybody's interested in any of their products, there's their name, M-A-D-S-E-N-S, Madsons1.com. I think it's their address. Don't hold me to it. But look how cheap they are. Timber Savage was only uh, $9.95. And I got a bunch of them. I got three or four of each. I've got me some more of the K&H, the Redheads. I got me some more of them. So far... I've really been leaning towards this blue and a lot of people says a lot of good things about these. I can't remember what they call them. Big blue or old blue or something like that. I don't know. But I like them. If you've been following me for a while, you know I like these 12 inch wedges. My axe. It's got a 28 inch handle on it. It's a three and a half pound axe. I guess I'm just an idiot. I like packing a lot of stuff, I like packing heavy stuff, I get a lot of good drive out of that axe, so that's kind of the reason why I like it. And it goes good with these wedges. But anyways, I'm gonna take the old fat 95 down there. I just got it sharpened up. Hopefully it's gonna cut. Uh we're gonna see if I can get something started. The way this property lays is about like this. They're kind of like a baseball diamond right here where I'm at. We're standing at home plate. The further out you go, the wider it gets to about 150, 200 yards, and then it starts to come back in on your outfield out on a baseball diamond. And then it turns into his yard and a pond, and then his yard and his pond runs up at an L shape, and then there's some more timber on the back side of that L shape that matches into Huser National Forest and Lauder Wade's dad's property. This is kind of a sensitive area to be logging right now I guess you can see for everything that's been going on with the YouTube world and everything but oh well life goes on fire this big boy up let him run for a minute I brought you out here to video me that 592, not the 395. Way to go. Back to the truck we go.
right. I typically don't do this, but this here is kind of an special occasion. This here is the 592 from Husqvarna. You, I don't think you can buy these right now in the U.S. This is a test model. I've had this thing right out a year. Husky got a hold of me, just like they did with the 572. Wanting to know if I would be interested in running it before it come out to the general public. And I cannot believe that Husqvarna, or whoever it is that's actually put my name out there, would look at me as a person to give them my opinion on a soul like this. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal connection to have. I can't believe I'm lucky enough to have that connection. But anyways, I'm going to try to give you guys a, an honest opinion review. Everything I'm going to tell you is going to be honest. But I'm going to try to give you my best, I don't want to say professional because I'm not a professional. I'm just an average person that loves to do a job at hand with a saw and my hands. I take a lot of pride in what I do, so I try to give you all a professional atmosphere that I don't consider myself to be a professional. Now, before I get started, we'll have a quick look over the saw just to give you an idea of what I'm working with. It's not badged because it's still under prototype. That's why everybody's like, I didn't have 592. Like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you. This is the 592. It does not have any badges on it other than Husqvarna's EPA crap on the sticker there. One thing I really do like about it, and it's not really cold enough around here to say that I like it, but I find myself using it more than not, especially in the winter months, and it's a heated handlebar. All it is is just a flip of a toggle switch, and you got heat, which heats about the first six to eight inches across the top, and then it heats this side of the great part of the handle back here on your trigger as well. Chain brake works. Everything on the thing works. The decompression works. I've never used it, and this sucker has got a lot of compression to it. Uh, another thing, and I don't care for this. I'm not knocking it all. I'm just telling you I don't care for it. Because I'm so used to the dirt bike style filters on Husky that now they've went to the 592 or the 575 style filter cartridge with the screw on top instead of the dirt bike clamp on the bottom. I don't care for it. Husky sent me two filters and believe it or not, I'm actually back. I, I've used this thing for over a year now. And I'm just now back on my very first filter. This filter here, before I changed it, probably had close to 5 to 10 gallons of gas ran through it. And then I changed that filter, blew it out, and there wasn't hardly nothing in it. So the filtration is still there as far as what Husky's doing to keep their filters good and clean. It's still got really good air filtration to where the fins don't pack up. I just don't care for that style of filter for the way that it... It clamps down on the manifold. You've only got about a quarter of an inch rise before the filter actually sits over top of that manifold. And then it's just got this wing nut that actually holds it on. I wish that they would have came up with a taller setup on that manifold that the filter would have set down onto. It's just my arguable that I that I don't really care for. It's, it's From somebody that's played around with saws and modified saws, I wish they would have done something a little bit different on the filtration side of it. There's still nothing wrong with Husky's filtration at all. It is just as good as their 395 setup, but I wish they would have done something a little bit different. Uh, the bar nuts, they came up with the bar nuts that stays on the chain cover. And instead of having your chain adjuster up here on the front, on a, like a 395, they got their chain adjuster out here on the side. And I really, really, really like that. And I like the idea of keeping the bar nuts built into the side cover so you never lose your bar nuts. Um, other than that, I love it. I really do. I really enjoy it. It's got a primer bulb here on the side. <coughs> um, kill switch. It's the kill and the choke is all built into one another. You just pull out on it, lift it up, and you're in choke. And I just let it sit there and da ding da ding a few times before I blip the throttle a couple times and keep the saw alive. And after that, you just push the... All right, now you're back in the run mode. So you run the saw for 10 minutes and you're done with it. Push down one time and the saw's off. Now there's not... You don't have to go back up or nothing to reset the saw. The saw's already reset back in its run position. So, enough talking. Oh, and this is what I was telling you. I typically don't do this, but I'm going to do it today. 
because I'm excited to see what the salt's going to do with the 24 as to what you are going to do. You're going to be excited just to see what the salt's going to do in general. So I'm running a 24 inch full comp RS33 hand filed chain with an 8 pin sprocket. I always run RS33 and I always run 8 pin sprockets. But I'm interested to see what this salt's going to do with a 24. Because typically, the past year, I've been running a 28 inch bar on this thing and it keeps me happy. And I'm pretty hard pleased. Pretty hard to keep pleased with a, a stock saw on a 28 inch bar with a full comp 8 pin sprocket. But this thing here is keeping me very happy.
Look at that. Oh, let me go back into. Bag on tips going out of this son of a buck. Ain't even got the paint wore off of it yet. And everybody wants to know why I don't run Oregon bars. That chain ain't tight. Bars just junk. You know what that means, Mama? The day is done. Oh, no. Damn. No, it means we gotta walk back up the truck and go grab the other saw. Or you can walk or, back up here and I'll hold this tree down. I'll walk back up here and I'll grab a 28. I got another 28 in there. But son of a buck. That chain's cutting good. I got the back of the tooth tunneled out, so it's it's really cutting good. I've not had to change any parts on this saw at all. It's still got the same spark plug in it. I've never even pulled the plug out to do a plug check on it. It's still got the same spark plug in it from whenever I first got the saw a year ago. Uh, I first broke it in on 32 to 1, and I bet I ran 10 to 15 gallon of gas on 32 to 1. And... Now I'm starting to wean my 395 off at of 32 to 1 and going towards 40 to 1. So this here is running on 40 to 1. And it's it's ran on every type of fuel you can imagine. It's ran off of uh, race fuel. It's ran off 110 octane race fuel. It's ran off of 93. It's ran off of ethanol free. It's run off of 87. It's running on 87 octane right now. But the only oil I've ever ran in this thing is Maxima Formula K2. And I am not sponsored by them. But I'm not afraid to tell you either. That is very good oil. I just about killed that 395 of mine the other day. Ooh, that's hot. Whew. I don't know if anybody remembers seeing that cooked paint on that. That's hot. Says the vein sticking on the side of your forehead. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. That's hot. <laughs> Thanks, Mama. You're welcome. <laughs> Peace almighty. Bless America. I wonder I wondered why he was running. Right there. I didn't figure he was walking back down the hill, so anything about that tall. Now you It's heavy. Not, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just carried it up the hill. It's heavy. <laughs> Whenever you're not somebody that's actually been around Saul's a whole lot. Yeah, you've been married to me for ten years. Oh but the for the way that, the of course, leather. you got to see the first saw, how the 395, how it sounded, how it ran, how it carried. What is your opinion on versus the 395 versus that, as far as how, how, the, trees are, how the trees are coming off the stump? Are they coming off faster? Does the saw seem to carry that longer bar better? Somebody that has no experience with a saw, what is your honest opinion? I like that saw better. I did tell him that maybe I should pay attention when you start running. If to... you see me running, you know there's something fixing bad to happen. Well, I seen you set the saw down and you took off. I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> I just sat here and watched the tree bend. I was like, I can't move. The reason, I why, the reason why I 
I took all the time on this one is because I'm trying to swing a veneer tree into a really tight hole without knocking down a whole bunch of other white oak because there's nothing but white oak around this. That one there, I didn't hurt it as bad as what I did this one, but this one here is not ever going to mount to anything. I knocked the top out of it. Oh, yeah, I seen it. Yeah, that's the one I was that's watching. That's the reason why I took off because now I'm ready to run because I know one of these two is going to take something and sling it back. And right there is the limb that came back. I know. I watched it. I was, I was watching it. Got to have it in your head. You got to be thinking what that tree wants to do before it has. The I, well, I don't know what it wants to do, but I can tell you when it started falling, I kind of froze. I was like, I need to move, but I can't. <sighs> do you see this, guys? I'm not a walker. I shouldn't be out here. I'm dangerous, or he's dangerous, or they are dangerous. <laughs> no, I'm gonna die today. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not gonna die. He's pretty good. I kind of watch what he does, but. I'm just one of them that I'd cover there. my head. I didn't think that tree was going to go.